All right, morning guys. Uh, another dreary day. I'm really starting to understand the feeling that you northern guys, way northern guys, up in Canada and Alaska, I'm getting a little bit of the feeling you guys get in the winter time. Because I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. Well, here at the pond, guys, I'm going to get these checked. Uh, if there's nothing in them, I'm not going to show you this morning. I feel like these videos just get repetitive if I don't have new areas set up. But uh, if you're just joining the channel and you want to want to see this area, basically we got a pond over here, a newly built pond. And over here, uh, not 60 yards, we got a pretty good sized drainage ditch. The property owner contacted us and wanted us to get the beaver and otter out of here. If you want to see how I set this area up, uh, just search back in my videos and uh, you'll find it there, guys. I will check back in with you here in a little bit. Hi, right, guys. If I knew that was all it was going to take, I would have I would have said that and quit recording a long time ago. All right, we just checked just checked the pond levee. I'm just walking down this trail, going down here. To the edge of the water see what we got and look what that step down long spring set produced guys first little gray this season and uh he's just sitting there waiting for us and all we did guys was have this step down right here we actually had it set for an otter but any other animal in the area is uh going to be using these trails so you got them trails set them blind sets on those trails in those pinch points in those step down areas uh guys you're going to make catches so uh there's proof right there and get him taken care of we're gonna get the rest of these i can see my, my trap down there at the water's edge is still set i'm gonna get him uh out of there and get this uh, trap reset and I'll show you guys where that trap's sitting when we get done. All right, everyone, got that trap. Got that fox out of there, got this trap reset now. All I'm gonna do is come right here, if you'll notice, this trail comes out of the water and it, there's a step up here and then there's another step up right here. Well, what we wanna do is come right here on the edge of that step up and all we're gonna do is move some of these leaves out of the way we're gonna scrape this out a little bit of this mud just for a place for our uh, long springs to uh, bed down in this hole we're gonna lay it right there on that step down Just like that, fellers. Take some of this mud that we got, and we're just gonna secure that trap in there to where it's not moving around. Just like that. Need a little bit more. We just want that trap to where it's not going to, uh, it's not going to move. If that animal steps on a long spring or steps on the jaws of the trap, misses the pan, we just don't want that trap to wiggle or move underneath them if that happens. So there we go, guys. We got that mud in there. Now all it's left to do is to cover that trap up. We look around this area, and what's the ground covered with? Leaves. Everywhere you look is leaves, guys. So I'm just going to take a few leaves. And I'm going to lay right on top of that trap. Just a few to cover the trap itself. And then guys will take a little bit bigger pile. We'll put off to the side. Where those jaws won't catch them. Whenever it uh whenever the trap fires. There we go. We got this stick right here and this little bit of debris. That's gonna help. Because that's gonna have them step over that. And they're gonna want to land in this solid flat spot right here before they come on down to that next step. So that trap's reset, guys. Waiting for the next animal that comes through. And uh, we're gonna ease over here and get this dam uh, checked. I'm gonna try it again. I'm gonna turn the camera off. 
And if I get over there, have any catches, I'll show you guys. All right, guys, no such luck. The dam was just like we left it. Uh, but now if I wanted to, guys, we didn't mean to catch this gray fox. We had that set hoping for an otter. But we knew it was possible another animal was going to use that trail and get caught. Now that we know we got gray fox in the area, guys, gray fox will run in pairs, stay in family groups. We caught one, and uh, there's a good possibility that we'll catch the other one because it's going to be out looking for its partner tonight. So if we wanted to, we could go in this area and put two or three dirt holes or flat sets or set for fox. And we're probably going to pick up a lot more fox. So uh, if you're trapping an area and you, you make a catch that you're not expecting an animal you didn't expect to be in the area. And you want to catch more of them, then uh, start putting in more sets specifically targeted to that animal. And, uh, and that'll help you, help you get those other animals picked up. Now, if we had, if we would have caught this fox in a dirt hole, there's a real good chance that next night we would have this, the partner to this fox caught in that very same dirt hole. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the more sets we've got out, the better our chances of picking it up. And even us just having that trail set, blind set like we do, uh, if that fox is in that area, and, and it's searching for this other fox that we had caught today, then there's a good possibility it's gonna be using that same trail that we got that trap setting on. And even without a scent or anything else, it's gonna be running that area and a good chance we might have it caught in that trail set tomorrow morning when we get here. We'll see. Guys, I'm gonna move on and uh, get some of these other uh, places checked and we'll check back in with you here in a little bit. over here to this new area that we got set with the, with the other little pond and uh gonna check in but on my drive over here guys i was talking yesterday about community stopping and talking to the farmers the people that live in that area get to know the area and uh why it's beneficial to do that uh, not only does it gain you access to other land guys but it gains you information so that ditch we just left uh i've been I know the beaver were in there, and I, and I can't figure out why I'm not making any catches. So I made a few phone calls to other neighboring properties that are around that uh, around that property that I'm at. Basically on that ditch, but but farther north, farther upstream. And uh, I figured out why I'm not catching those beaver. There's going to be a pretty good population of beaver, but about a, about a mile up this stream from where we're at, or that ditch. Uh, I talked to the vet property owner. He said, man, when you get ready to catch them beaver, just let me know and I'll take you right to the dam. They're using it, they're packing mud, there's fresh chew sticks everywhere, and uh, they're in there, they're working. So guys, I've been wasting my time this last week, just a mile down that ditch, in the same area that they're at, because those beaver have moved up, made another dam, and they moved up living in that area. Now, whether they're not coming through because we're there and they know we're there or they're just working to progress and, and build their territory up and they're working the other direction, I don't know. But uh, after after this rainy weather and stuff passes, guys, uh, I'm going to get back over there. We're going to go up that ditch and we'll probably pick those beaver up pretty quick. So if something's not working for you guys, um, keep working at it. Uh, make some phone calls, try to figure out what the animal's doing, why it's doing it. Change your tactics. Don't be set in one thing and get complacent. And yeah, sometimes you got to let that trap work and it, it'll end up producing. But other times, guys, you're wasting your time. So give it some thought, look around, make some phone calls, make some contacts and, uh, and get it done. Well, guys, we get over here to this ditch. Uh, looking down here, guys, the 330 still set. Look underneath that log there. 
All right, guys, this 330 is still sitting there. All right, we had a... Uh, right here, guys, we had a foothold sitting at the bottom of this trail. And we had a stick. We had that trap anchored right here around this tree. And I'm gonna have to go back and watch that video. But I believe I just lost a foothold trap. I'm gonna have to go back. And uh, this is gonna be a first if what happened, if what I'm thinking happened, happened. Uh, guys, I had the cable, uh, I'm pretty sure, with a split ring attached to this tree. That's the way I've been anchoring it for, for years now, and I've never had one break off. But I'm pretty sure, guys, something got in this trap. I had it bedded right here. Uh, it was a day the recording didn't work, but I basically made a trail, bedded that trap in the water, used a little bit of beaver scent right up here on the hill, and... Uh, for some reason, that cable broke uh, at the tree, guys. So it wasn't just the trap breaking off the cable. That cable broke off of that tree. So I'm gonna have to go back and look at that video from a few days ago. Well, actually, I won't be able to because I didn't get it recorded. But uh, I'm gonna probably walk this ditch, drive this ditch real slow, and uh, See if I can find that beaver hung up somewhere, possibly, down this ditch. Check these holes that I know are here, guys. See if possibly it, if I can see any footprints or anything going into these holes. Could have been an otter fighting that trap. Those otter are uh, attracted to uh, beaver caster as well. Mink set's still right here, guys. Got our other mink set right here. And guys, I'm just gonna walk this ditch and uh, and see if I can't figure out where that animal took my trap and get it back. And I'll check back in with you if we find it. Now guys, right here I'm seeing a, and that's low as this water is, it's a very good possibility. There's Look right here in the sand, we've got a cow oak track running this ditch. Almost now seeing that, because we've got that, I believe if we'd have caught that beaver, I think it would have went up the dam into deeper water instead of down this way where they're not living. We had that 330 guarding that trail that it would have took to get to get in there. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go back up this way. Probably climb out, guys. And I bet you I've got a coyote that just ran off with my beaver set. So I just I just go to show you guys too that. You never know what happened. And when you're setting a trap, planning for one animal, you've got to keep in mind that it's very possible to get a non-target. And that non-target may be stronger than, uh, than what you're after. But we can tell with that. Let's get around here and look a little bit. Look for some tracks. up here guys I'm, I can't tell 100% what these tracks are I'm 
gonna go ahead and climb out right here and uh, walk around the edge of this bank up here on top. I'm just gonna look around for tracks. All right, guys, I'm just, all I'm doing now, I've walked around up here for about five minutes or so. All I'm gonna do now is walk the side of this ditch for a pretty good ways this direction. Seeing if I can find something. See if I can find him laid down on the side of this ditch. I'm watching the water, guys, for any kind of ripples or movement. If it's hung up down there in the water, knows I'm here, it'll start moving around a little bit. Uh, but yeah, that's all that's left to do, guys. Uh, this is an expensive, expensive loss this morning. But, again, it happens, guys. No matter how hard I've tried or how much I've learned, it still happens to me. And I bet you, someone says it don't happen to them. Either they don't do a lot of trapping, or they're a liar. So don't get discouraged. Uh, even us uh, guys that's been at it for a while get discouraged sometimes, guys, because of things like this. So again, just know you're not alone. All right, guys, we walked a pretty good ways down here. I'm gonna cross the ditch and do the same thing on the other side. And uh, hopefully, maybe if it was a beaver, we've got him in those sets on up this ditch where he's headed back into that pond. But uh, we'll get up there and get those checked. Well, he's been trying to crawl yeah. and get out of there. Alright guys, we got one of the two-year-olds here in that snare sitting in that culvert last night. Our other snare over there is still set. Uh, this definitely isn't the beaver that stole my trap over there. I'm, I'm pretty sure that was a cow. You guys got any thoughts, let me know what you think. But uh, yeah, we're going to get him out of here. We're going to get another snare put back in there where this one was. And see, I bet you there's going to be there's going to be a few more this small size in here and uh, we're going to try to get them picked up while we're over in the area and got traps set. All right guys, right before I shot this beaver, the property owners pulled. They actually saw me walking the ditch down the road looking for that trap. Pulled up, asked if I had any luck and I told them, hey, let's pull down here. There's, you know, I got a couple of sets down here by this pond that we set yesterday. So it's pretty awesome. They got to get out here with me and, uh, and see what us trappers do and, uh, and uh, learned, I got to talk to them a little bit about trapping and fur put up. So uh, they learned a little bit that they, they didn't know. Anyway, guys, if you look here, we got a tail catch on this beaver. So it is a small beaver. But with us getting this tail catch, that tells me that I had my snare too big. And that beaver was able to, to get his front feet through it, his back feet through it before the as the snare closed and dropped and then uh it right there's where it tightened down at it was on his tail so i believe i believe that's what happened with this beaver but anyway this snare's run you guys snares are one time use most of the time unless you got a small animal every very seldom can you use a snare a second time but right here was our anchor guys i'm just going to come up here and i'm going to take this split ring off the snare and we're going to make a reset using this same anchor and a different snare all right guys here's our here's our second snare and this snare is set up a little bit different than, than these other snares you guys have been seeing me seeing me use. This this snare is made by Carl Hershiser out of Memphis, Tennessee. And he's selling these things. If you guys are interested, look him up. He's in all the all the trapping groups on Facebook. And uh, he's easy to find. But guys, he's got these snares built specifically for each animal that you're targeting. And this is a this is a short snare made for a beaver. He's got an extra swivel in here, and then he's got a heavy-duty 
anchor and on his uh, anchor cable uh, he's got it like I said specifically these are these are great snares guys I seen a demo where he put on how he builds them uh, how he, him and his wife puts them together and uh, this is the first one I've you try uh, given a shot gonna try but uh, we're gonna put it right here in this culvert and we're gonna see how it does all we're gonna do guys we're gonna we're gonna just come into his anchor point that he's got built on here already put that split ring onto my anchor point now I've got a now my that, that's the reason I put a uh, barrel swivel on my anchors is so that I've got another another swivel point there so we got a swivel point here on that anchor he's got a swivel point built into the snare and then we get on down here to this action point now actually I would forgot this uh this snare isn't loaded so i'm going to load this snare see how it's in a teardrop shape we want it more of in a round shape and uh he showed me how he showed me his secret to how he loads these things so i'm going to give it a go here and see if i can make it see if i can make it work all right guys definitely not not uh the job that carl himself does but uh we've got a round shape to this snare now And, and the reason you load it is you want you want that animal to touch that snare and it falls and it falls down to a small small diameter if we wouldn't have loaded it and we bumped it the snare would caught up here and the animal would have to pull it the rest of the way down so what we want guys we want to be able to just bump it and that locking mechanism close down to a small area and catch that animal that could be part of the reason why that animal, this beaver, was able to get through that snare before it completely closed down small enough. Maybe this snare wasn't loaded the way it should have been. I'm going to do just a little bit more, guys. I want that to close up just a little bit tighter than what it is. So I'm going to work on it just a little bit longer. All right, guys. So that's, we loaded it a little bit more. Now it's closing down a little bit tighter when we bump it. Oh, there we go. That's gonna work. So, the guys, we're just gonna come in here just like we did yesterday, and we're gonna we're gonna place this snare right in that opening. We're gonna close it up a little bit because we got these small beaver here. Right there is what's left of my support on that stick. He tore it up. And we're gonna try to reuse this wire, but we're gonna have to find us another another stick. All right, guys. I keep. Uh, I keep breaking. I've tried a couple of different sticks and I keep breaking them. So we went up there and we got us a, a stick that's not gonna break. We're just gonna tighten, tighten this support wire up on this stake here. And quit piddling and playing, wasting time. All right, guys, we got that support wire on there now. And get this stake in there where it's, where it's secure. Not going to move around. Got our snare here ready, guys. We're just gonna take, wrap it around that wire, come right through this last little loop that we got in there. You guys ain't able to see, are you? There we go, guys. So, so we just wrapped our snare. Got us a good support wire. Wrapped our snare around that support wire, and then we come up through here, through our little uh, notch that we made in the end of it, our little S curve. Actually, this one's more like a U, but uh, anyway, got that snare hanging there. Another beaver comes up through here. We'll have him caught. And what we're going to do, guys, we're just going to grab a little bit of this, this stick and debris, and we're just going to block down this other side here just a little bit more. Take a little bit of this debris, and we'll pile it up here. And it's just going to keep those animals from from wanting to go around that snare. We're just forcing them 
forcing them into that snare. So there we go, guys. We built that up quite a bit. Another beaver coming through here. Should go right through that snare, and uh, we should have another one waiting for us in here if there's any more here, guys. So uh, by me making a catch, guys, on this beaver, uh, putting a new snare in here, I've got to get a name tag out of my truck, put a name tag on this snare, and then we'll be ready to go. Guys, I keep name tags, supplies with me. You've seen me use this box before. It's just got my name tags, my swivels, my ferrules, my just anything I might need if I need to take some cable and make a uh, anchor or uh, or extension cable. I'm just gonna step right back down here, guys. I go I'll go right here on this anchor, and I'm gonna wrap my name tag on that trap. So anybody that might be driving by, see the trap here, get out and mess with it, they'll see my name. I'm going to take some of this grass that's here, guys, and I'm just going to cover that anchor cable up. Not because of the animal, but just because we're so close to where the public's going to be traveling. And I'm hoping that they don't see anything out of the ordinary and want to get down here and investigate. Now guys, up here where I lost that trap this morning, you guys got any ideas, be sure to share them. Um, I'm really, never thought I'd say it, but I'm really thinking that uh, that uh, Coyote done that. Uh, but that farmer pulled up on me. I walked around down there for about a good 15, 20 minutes, walking that ditch, top and bottom. Uh, looking for that animal and a farmer pulled up and I got to talking to them. They asked me about catches I told them we just go ahead and pull down here and check this set uh, See if there's anything in it and they got to see a catch So I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna turn around. Uh, I'm gonna drive this ditch real slow Looking down in the bottom of it up on the side of it. I'm gonna watch for movement watch for Possibly if I can't pick out what critter may have got that trap, but Still got a few more locations to set, guys, or check, and uh, we'll get over there and get them checked, and uh, we'll get back with you when something happens. All right, guys, just uh, just reset, cleaned out this 330. I don't know if the GoPro recorded. I'm having some issues with this GoPro. Uh, reset this trap. We had to clean out that run a little bit. We had to clean out that 330. But guys, while I was driving over here to this ditch, uh, I was giving some thought to that to that missing foothold and. Uh, I think when I was out there, my first reaction was that my cable broke. Uh, but on my drive over here, I was thinking about it, and I, I think I was mistaken. I never did find a piece of broken cable. Uh, I never did find evidence of that. I think what just happened was I just had my first uh, split ring failure. Uh, those split rings, I've been using them for a couple of years, and I've really, I really like them. Uh, yeah, really kind of promoted them. I was feeling really good about them because I haven't had a failure with them yet. And, uh, but I'm disappointed, guys. I'm disappointed now because I did, I believe I had that failure. And I, I'm missing that trap. I'm missing that animal. And, uh, yeah, I'm just kind of down this morning. Now, I need to do some research on those split rings and, uh, see, see if they make some stronger ones or if that's just kind of a fluke or just a big animal a big beaver big otter big cow got in there and struggled enough to be able to do it that's it's really uncommon or or what but i need to try to better myself with this mistake i need to try to be better better equipment better prepared next time anything i can do to keep it from happening again i need to try to do it and uh so a question for you guys you guys that are out there that use split rings uh, have you guys had failures? What are your thoughts on them? Because uh, up until this point, I, I really, I really liked them. Awesome piece of equipment. But this is giving me just some doubt, and I want to ask you guys what y'all think. But anyway, guys, I'm gonna move on up here, get these sets checked. If there's anything in it, I'll show you. We're gonna get on over there to that bridge, and we'll get those sets checked. All right, guys, we made it over to this bridge. I ain't gonna lie, I'm pretty bummed out about that trap. So I hope we got a catch here. Just kind of lift my spirits a little bit. Uh, looking down here, guys, I can see my anchor chain coming around. 
in, I can actually see the trap still set under the water's edge there. But uh, we made some good catches today, guys. Uh, our success that we put out, we caught that fox and that uh, and that blind set on that trail, and then we had the beaver caught in the snare. We set yesterday, so we should be feeling pretty good today, but I'm really bummed about losing that trap. But uh, anyway, I can go down here and check these. Connor bear's still here, guys. And... Same thing here, guys. I can see my trap still sitting there on the bottom open. I can see the pan. So nothing here. That's going to be the end of the day, guys. Y'all give me your thoughts on that uh, on that mist trap. Uh, I wish I had it on video where I could go back and look at it and see what I possibly might have done wrong. But I really don't think I did anything wrong. I think I just had a failure with that split ring. So, uh, yeah, here's what it is. We'll... Uh, We'll probably put a few more blind sets in that uh, ditch. Uh, if there was a beaver or an animal, just give us a better opportunity of catching that animal that's got our trap. And if it was a beaver, guys, there's a good chance while we're over there, we'll snag that beaver in one of those other sets and we'll get that trap back. Now, it may take a while because that beaver's uh, been caught. He's going to be pouting. He's going to be hiding. It may be, It may be a week. It may be two weeks. It may be three weeks. But if we... If it was a beaver and we leave our beaver sets in that ditch, uh, there's a real good possibility that uh, we'll, we'll get that beaver caught. Um, now, if it was a big otter or a cow, like I got my suspicions, it was a cow, uh, I may never see that trap again. I, I guess I could, you know, we might pick that otter up in some of our beaver sets that we put in that ditch. Uh, we might could put some dirt holes and some land traps up on top of that bank and uh, try to catch that cow, you know, if he comes back. But uh, I think it's a really slight chance that that could be a possibility. But if that trap's worth it to you, then it's definitely worth your effort to, to give it a try. You got to do all you can, guys. Uh, just uh, whatever, whatever yourself tells you you got to do, you need to do it. But anyway... Uh, bummer guys thanks for watching thanks for the support and uh, we'll see you tomorrow